Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and we can talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I am the co host, uh, I think, for this episode or indefinitely. I don't know. Anyway, I'm on for this. Definitely. Okay, indefinitely. I'm the co host, uh, Mikhail Casanova. How are you guys doing? Hopefully, everyone's living well. Anyway, we just watched Binge Blue Period on Netflix. It's been on our list when it first came out. They kept recommending it. And we're like, yeah. Yeah, we'll watch it later and it's finally later and it was fabulous it was so good it met beyond my expectations i had low expectations actually i should have known better because netflix has been doing really well with their anime yeah it's just true they have they really have haven't they yeah they have like recently they've been really good at picking their anime and I'm so grateful for it. It's just the live action stuff that sucks. <laughs> I think they'll start working on that. To be honest, I don't remember their bad anime. No, I mean like the live action adaptations like Cowboy Bebop and uh, Resident Evil, which, oh God. I got... That Cowboy Bebop was good. We liked it. But I mean, if you're an anime purist. True, 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 true. Yeah, that's that, yeah. But besides that, Blue was really good. Like, the cover didn't do it justice. It just has a picture of the protagonist. Um, and, you know, I thought it was just going to be about the protagonist getting involved with art and having, like, some angsty moments, having some identity crisis moments. But it was a really nice flow. It was wholesome. Very, very wholesome. And it was about a boy who, you know, was just a regular guy. There's nothing dramatic about him. He was just an average dude who had friends. He did well in school. And all of a sudden, he got into art. And it was a random, spontaneous moment for him. So I looked up something uh, just to dive into. So the title of the, the anime is also a manga as well. It's titled Blue Period. And um, what's interesting is looking it up what Blue Period means. Uh, by the, the definition is uh, the Blue Period, uh, which in Spanish is Periodio Azul, is a term used to define the works produced by Spanish painter Pablo Picasso between 1901 and 1904, when he painted essentially monochromatic paintings and shades of blue and blue green, only occasionally worn by other colors. So I thought that was really interesting that the title of it is uh, Blue Period, and it's about, you know, uh, Yutaro Yaguchi, who's doing all of his art, you know, he's getting into painting and everything, and then it's based off of something actually you know an actual period in time so I, that's pretty interesting and you're going to hear our, our daughter is ill in the yeah. background she's talking because we're eating pizza and recording and you know all kinds of stuff with this podcast it, it's all natural anyway that, that was my <laughs> so i've never heard of blue period i've never heard of the manga and i can see why because it was only serialized in a magazine monthly in Hawaii, I'm used to being exposed to titles that are published in volumes in bookstores. And for a manga that I've never heard of, I'm really impressed by how the anime turned out. Like, the flow was really good. I don't know if I read, if I read the manga first and then I'll have a lot of criticism to it. Because a lot of stuff happened in this anime. True. Um, one of the things, like, we've, we've kind of, um, I noticed we've been doing this trend lately where we watch the anime first and then we'll go and we'll watch the, or read the, the manga. And it's amazing because in many instances, a lot of the stuff that we've watched first 
and read a lot of people don't like if you go into reddit forums or any type of like miami list or something like that people will lambast these you know these these anime version or adaptations of manga but um case in point domestic girlfriend i know that's about that where uh i absolutely love the anime and it led me to read the manga which is you can go listen to that podcast but anyway i love the the manga and until the ending of it and then another one too that i i got into was um uh what was it um i can't even think of the name of it but i watched the anime first and then i read the manga and the manga was way better it's basically the Hige hero or oh no that's another one he got hero it's still going the manga's still going for that but there's another one. I can't think of the name of it. Um, but anyway, it's, it's relevant. But it, yeah. several of them. Oh, 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 oh! I know. Um, the Promised Neverland. I love the anime. Oh yeah. Even though everyone says it's the worst adaptation ever made, which is interesting. I I don't agree. I mean, even though I do agree that the manga is better, I don't think the anime is god awful. I thought it was good for what we were watching. But besides that, we're going to concentrate on Blue Period. We'll talk about Promise Neverland another time. Mm -hmm. So let me talk about what the story is about. So we got Yatora Yaguchi, who is a regular guy who has a group of friends. They hang out. He is diligent in school. He does well with his studies. And then one day he forgets his cigarettes in the art room. And he sees a painting. And this painting, he's like um, really impressed with it. He learns that the person really loves art. And even though they're talented, they still put a lot of work into it. And he starts thinking about art more, especially after getting an assignment in class about what they want to draw and paint and such. And he didn't really have any enthusiasm to this homework. Until one day late at night, he just saw the city in blue. In his eyes, it was blue. And he was wondering if he could translate that into art. And that's where everything starts. So the, because I didn't see the first, or I wasn't paying attention because I think I was cooking when we, uh, when you put that anime on. Um, was it Marumori or was it uh, Ryuji Ayakawa that, Whose painting he saw or the work? It was Madame Mori. Okay, okay. It was the big canvas of the angels. Okay, okay. And I didn't get to see that. Mori's theme was um, praying. So anything related to praying, she did art on it. Okay, okay. But it's interesting. We've got the, the characters, their names and everything, and it's got portraits up as well. Maru Mori and Yorosuke Tagashi look a lot alike. If you think about it. They do look alike. So Takahashi is a character that gets introduced later on in the story when Yoguchi gets more serious about art to the point where he decides his college. He goes to art school. Even though in the beginning of the story, he was criticizing anyone who wants to go to art school because it's so expensive. And he goes to prep school and he meets this guy who is kind of antisocial because he's so focused on art. And he's talented. He's actually talented in art, just like Mori is. That guy is uh, Yorosuke Takahashi, in case y'all are wondering. And so... At first, we didn't really think about the connection until we started seeing Mori more, Mori more, <laughs> Mori more often, and we started seeing Takahachi more often too, and there's, like what Mikhail said, there's a lot of similarity with them, their eyebrows, their eyes, their talent in art, like even though they have different last names, I wouldn't be surprised if they're related like cousins and such. And I feel like that was going to be like a reveal later on in the story, but it never got to that point. Yeah, it, it, I was actually surprised that, you know, there was no point um, in the manga, well, not the manga, the anime, 
where uh, Maru and Yodosuke didn't cross paths. Like, I would have expected that to have happened at some point. I'm not surprised because Mori is older. She's a year older, and Takahashi is the same age as Yoguchi. So I'm not surprised that they didn't cross paths. Okay. Maybe if they went to the same prep school at the same time. But the prep school seems like people who are prepping for the entrance exams for the college. I will say this. When, uh, the artwork for the show that's on Netflix does not give you any indication of what you're going to be watching. No. It, it really... So the main character, Yoro uh, Yaguchi, he is... Um, the way he's presented, especially in the, the, the beginning episode, they kind of make him seem like a little bit of a delinquent. Oh, totally. They you do. Know? They show him at a bar late at night. You don't even know if he's drinking, but he's smoking. High school kids are not supposed to smoke. In fact, they get in trouble if they're caught outside of school by their teachers for smoking. Yeah, so it's like you got uh, Iguchi, he's with his friends, uh, Urashima and Koriga Kubo. I hope I said that right. Anyway, <laughs> but like um, he's with these characters and like they're smoking, drinking, and all that. And like they completely showcase him. In the, the sense of a delinquent, because he's mocking, you know, art and and the, the the art class and everything like that. And it's like you really go get to see over the course of the twelve episodes, which they are so good, they're very captivating. The the twelve episodes really you get to see the character growth of Yaguchi um, from sim. I, I want to say semi delinquent. Just because anytime I think of like a delinquent character, I think of like the character at this point now. Like my my image of a delinquent is uh, that guy, the main character from The Sound of Silence. I didn't think he was a delinquent. At the beginning. At the beginning. Oh, okay. At the beginning. <laughs> he was a del- he was because he believed the girl. That it, he was he was a delinquent in that sense when he was a kid before. You know, so, or I guess another typical anime delinquent character is like Yusuke Murashi. Yes, Yusuke. Yeah. So he was, like I said, I see him as a semi delinquent, and then they don't really stick with that for very long. It's like an episode and a half, and then it's like it jumps to him and his growth and, you know, diving into because he's got a knack for art. An inkling of a, a gift, um, but you see that he's in a class with people like Ryuji and Haruka, Yorosuke, Maki, uh, Mori, and uh, Sa- Sai, and they're all good. They're all gifted uh, painters and artists. It comes natural to them. Okay, gifted. <laughs> you know, like they're they're very. It's it's not much of an effort for them, and he's got to work hard. And, and it's kind of interesting when you're looking at like the stuff that he does, like to get better, because initially his teacher uh, Masako is saying like he's got a gift, and but he needs to foster, he needs to train, he needs to you know work hard at it. And with him. You see, he gets a little better, and he gets some praise, and then that gets shattered when he realizes, like, the bar that he's a reason to is not even the bar that everyone else has set. Well, yeah, because they've had years to hone this. Like, they naturally had this gift, and over the years, they were able to refine it. They were able to actually dive deeper, get that personality, get that uniqueness for themselves, while him, he's literally starting from scratch, and he has to look at all these previously made art and see what's his style. How can he make his unique to himself and not just a copy imitation? You know? And I like in this anime, they kept with a theme for him where 
in the beginning, they're saying, oh, you're smart. But then they show that he mm -hmm. studies hard for his classes to get good grades. And they kept that theme with his art. Like, yeah, he's good at it, but he worked harder for it. He's always making an effort in everything he does. And at first, it just seems like, oh, it's supposed to be like this. He's supposed to work hard for it. But then as he's getting more passionate about the art, more frustrated, you see that he gets stressed out about it to the point where he gets hives. Oh, God. That was crazy. <laughs> that was wild. Like, I, I don't think I've ever gotten stressed out to the point where I've gotten oh. highs before. Because, like, when we first showed that, I was like, what is that? Yo, I thought he was getting an allergic reaction to the paint. Because mm -hmm. there is, like, a scene where Ryuji oh. was talking about this, um, this red paint, vermilion. And it's history of how it was poisonous. So I thought that was like a foreshadow for something. And then Yoguchi started getting highs. And I was thinking, oh no, he's getting poisoned by the paint. He's working so hard, but it's working against his health. But no, it was a mental thing. Like, that's how stressed he was. And it, it really, like, you know, to, to add on to your point, it was really... um going on going really well to showcase like just how much he devotes himself to you know whatever he he does his schoolwork his you know this passion slash soon to be career field you know his goals he gives it 110 percent and it's interesting um the character that they initially showcased which you might be wondering okay are there any like romance angles in this and it's it's kind of funny because the first character they introduce that he potentially could have a romance with is Ryuji Ayakawa. Um but the thing well that I mean that's interesting, we'll dive into that in a minute. But then, you know, there's uh Ryuji, then there's Maki, and then for the longest period you're thinking Mori is the the love interest. Right, right. You know, like the one who really got him into um, really art to even go to the Masako, uh, Masako san's class was Ryuji. And it's funny because, like, when we were listening, because we watched this dub, we didn't watch it sub. So, when I watched it dubbed, I, I, you don't normally hear female characters have such deep, you know, like, boomful voices. I thought the voice did not match the character. I was thinking, why did they make her voice sound like that? Like, it was bringing me back to um, Utena, uh, that story of the girl who was trying to save the Rose Princess. Revolution girl Utena, where she had, like, such a princely female sounding voice. I was like, why? I thought we improved with the voice acting. I've never I don't even know what that is. is it old or it's old. Oh, okay. It's old. Okay. It's old. It's like Sailor Moon. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sailor Moon. Exactly. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh I was like thinking, what? She's a beautiful woman. And I was also thinking about what's that story about my dress up darling? Uh, dress up darling where she has like a feminine voice and they kind of look alike and they're into art and such and I was thinking that Ryuji's Ayukawa's voice was a bit deep and then they later on reveal that Ryuji's a dude yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you never would if, if Yaguchi hadn't have said it like point blank you never would have guessed at all. Um, and it's it, apparently a lot of people don't know Ryuji's a guy at all because it's it's interesting how they showcase. Like, I think one of the characters when they were in uh, art class, they started dating, right? The dark guy. 
Oh yeah, this was in the prep school. So prep school, yeah. yeah, in the prep school. So we see that Ayukawa is asking this guy out on a date, and Yaguchi is saying, "Wow, they're really brave for doing that." And I'm thinking, of course she's going to ask that guy out. She's a smoking bitch. What, what, what does she got to lose? And then we find out that Ayukawa was actually a man. Yeah, and that's why it was such a a ballsy thing. Yeah. And then, like, it, it dives into that further where, like, uh, later on, or, like, an episode or two later, uh, Ryuji, who is one of the promising students of the prep school, um, like, I think if they stuck with it, they clearly would have gotten in to the school that they were trying to go to. Um, Ryuji um, gets dumped by the guy. Because uh, Ryuji comes forward and tells the guy, like, oh, okay, you know, I'm actually a guy, da 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 And it freaked freaked out the person that they asked out because the person could not tell. And, you know, the, the anime does really well with, like, showcasing, uh, how would you say, was it uh, Bishonen male would be the, the feminine male? Bishonen male, is that? Yes, Ryuji, if, if Ryuji's dressed up as a man, like, full on, he would be so handsome. Like, be shonen. Like, totally pretty boy, could have any girl they wanted. Which is funny, because Ryuji's very, very popular with girls at their school. And it's, it's interesting, like, they're very popular. And, and you would think, because most anime... um and I, I did say this when we were watching it, but most anime don't really touch on characters that are trans or bi or gay very well. Usually sometimes they fall into a stereotype or a category. They like domestic girlfriend, the bartender guy falls into a stereotype, but then you find out that he's actually, actually is a <laughs> So in a lot of animes, when they show someone who's, homosexual especially on the male side they're older and they have like this auntie vibe going on where they're there to take care of you give you advice and they have such a like a they look manly but they have like a oh darling let me help you there oh no 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 oh, no kind of vibe and this one was a teenager that completely you there's no telling it that was a man at all. There's none. And, like, they actually have a very interesting story because you would think on the surface that, you know, Blue Pair would only focus on Yaguchi, but it actually it moves around to, to other characters. I mean, he's the central focus, but you get to see, like, the struggles of Ryuji in dealing with, you know, having coming from an abusive family, having abusive parents who are not accepting of them. And if I were to really say, I would say more so Ryuji is gender fluid. Yeah, very. Very, very. gender fluid. Because they, they can go either way. Which was a surprising reveal. We thought that Ryuji Ayukawa only liked men, but Ryuji has revealed that they can, they, they did like girls in the past. And can still like girls it's just that it's easier to like guys because of the way they dress so i was like questioning oh so does ryuji just like to dress more feminine is that is that it that's it but they can go both ways but it hasn't been clarified as of the the anime it hasn't been clarified and um it, what, what they also do with ryuji is um they showcase their relationship with Yaguchi because they, initially they're antagonistic towards each other. And then uh, you, you see how Ryuji, they don't directly say it. And I, and I think this is what I like about how Japanese media handles you know, IRL or real life topics versus how Western media does. Western cartoons, TV shows, everything has to be, I want, almost wanted to swear, but, you know, we can't swear on your podcast. No. Um, everything needs to be told to you. 
It's just, I can't just see it and get the impression. You need to tell me what I'm supposed to think, what I'm supposed to feel. Pretty much in your face. It's in your face. It's pretty, it's annoying because it's like, there's nothing left to the imagination. There's no mystery. But with Japanese media, the way they, they do a show and don't tell or show and you can interpret it how you want. And don't tell. And, and one of the things that they really showed with Ryuji is between being uh, being gender fluid or bi or both. Let's just say bi, bi and gender fluid. Um, dealing with uh, self esteem issues, working as a hostess, which was another thing they kind of touched and goed on, um, having abusive parents that were very, very abusive. You could tell, like, from a societal standpoint, uh, Ryuji is not the norm, and the parents are probably embarrassed. And then also, um, whatever the fort they 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 foreshadow the girl that Ryuji liked. Yes. In a sense of that person is dead. I got the foreshadowing that that person died. It was kind of dark. When they brought up that topic, because... Like it, it, the mood dropped. Okay, so this is how it drops. So we were focusing on Yoguchi in the anime, and I even commented, yo, Ryuji Ayukawa was dropped. We've never, we have not seen this character. It This character has been forgotten. Just as you said, they put the whole character back. And they're showcasing Ryuji's abusive parents and that they disapprove of him and his passion and they throw his stuff out. And Ryuji's now working at a hostess bar and Yoguchi's calling Ryuji's like, hey, are you okay? And then Ryuji vents at him and say, you won't hold me. You just want to try to hold me. You want to really hold me. And then... Well, one of the guys was like, if someone was drowning, you throw a life float, but you wouldn't jump in to actually save them. And it's like, that was so deep. Like, yeah, you went there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> And then it was like, oh, is that really bad? Is that so bad? And then Ruji's explained more where it's like, yeah, you want to talk when it's convenient for you. And then Ruji used that lifeline analogy. It's like, oh, dang. Yeah, that that does sound pretty bad. Yeah. And, And I think also, like, to give context to it, like, you also need to kind of understand like Japanese culture where it's like you don't dive into other family like issues or personal issues. Like you're very much you, your family, you don't get involved in other people. So they, like it's a cultural thing. Yeah, it's your problem, not mine. And, you deal with it. And, and Yaguchi really emphasized that. And so and, and that arc with Ryuji really, like, brought Yaguchi to a whole nother area with his character. And I feel like if Yaguchi hadn't made the effort to reach out again and be there for Ryuji, Ryuji, the the, the underlying current that they kind of eased that was that Ryuji was going to kill himself. Yeah, because Ryuji was going to the ocean and Yaguchi's like, what? Okay, I'm going with you. And then Yaguchi asked if Ryuji was going to, like, kill himself. And Ryuji said, no, I'm not because if I did, then that means I don't care anymore. And Ryuji elaborated more from in the past when Ryuji was venting to a female friend, and the female friend said, well, would you be able to be naked in front of people? And Ryuji said, no, I can't. No way. That would be so embarrassing. And the female friend said, then that means you care. You can't. You're not ready to die. Yeah. And that was, like, really profound. Yeah. Like, you, you're not ready to leave because you still care. Yeah, and then Ruji 
suddenly revealed that that was his crush, and that was in the past, and it's dark that the girl that he liked knew stuff like that, saying, well, you care then, you're not ready to die. So does that mean she understands that? Did she not care anymore? Did she die? Maybe we'll find out when we read the manga. Yeah. We don't know in the anime. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, it's really, there's a lot of foreshadowing. And, and also, in the, the two, and a half, two and a half episodes, or two episodes, where you have uh, Yaguchi and Ryuji together, uh, when Yaguchi went to um, be there for Ryuji, it kind of haunted the Yaguchi's by. I, well, okay. I was, potential. There's total potential for them to get together. Yeah, I was asking, I was sort of like, yo, is this BL? Are we getting to BL here? Like, I'm not against it, but you know. Like, it, it, it totally gave that vibe, especially when they had to do the naked portrait. That, the vibe was strong there. It went from, can you get naked in front of people to, okay, let's do naked portraits of ourselves. And it was interesting because Ryuji, uh, what's it called, challenge Yoguchi to be naked and do a naked portrait. And then Yoguchi turned it back. And Ryuji says, I can't do that in front of you because they still was self-conscious, was being very feminine. And one of the thoughts was, like, you're both guys. What does it matter? But if you're self-conscious, that means you care what Yoguchi thinks. Like, yeah, you you kind of like him, don't you? It gives that very strong vibe that Ryuji does like Yoguchi. And even from the first episode when they first interacted, you kind of got that attention vibe from them oh yeah oh yeah like mikhail is asking oh is that the is that the love potential are they gonna get together and i said i don't think so but i think this is if it's going to develop it would be these two the development like it's sort of like those childhood friends where they fight all the time and they don't realize they're attracted to each other until much later yeah i viewed it as that yeah, and another thing too is like it really subverted your your expectations of who the love interest could be, and I'll go ahead and spoil it for those of you who haven't watched the anime yet. Uh, by the twelfth episode, you still have no idea who he's really interested in. It hints towards Mori, but you know you get time where there are episodes where it's focusing on Maki Kawada, who is also in prep school, who. He spends time with him. He's got an interesting character arc, too, where she's got a sister who's in the school that she wants to go to, who also went to the same prep school, uh, who's basically kind of like a prodigy, and she's got a serious inferiority complex. Yeah. And it's like, there are moments where, like, when she opens up, it gets dark. Like, you get to see how bad her inferiority complex is compared to, like, I mean, Yaguchi has one. And and, and in many ways, all the characters have it. And I think that's the dynamic. Like, if you were to think it's just, this is just about Yaguchi, he's the vehicle for the show. Yes. He's the vehicle, but it also devotes time to every character, with the exception of one, which is Haruka Hashida. Shady, mysterious person. I mean, like, yo, know, when they first introduced Haruka, I was like, is this character, like, the antagonist? They, they intentionally made Haruka Hashira very eccentric from looking like a bishonen, but having pigtails, like, really? That's a weird combo. I'm just saying, but it worked for this character. To having, you know, the sadistic side, because he was saying that he wants to see the competitions work and how they struggle. Like, he wanted to see the the journey. And he's like, I can't wait to see it. I'm like, they're licking their lips. Their cheeks are blushing. They're getting hot and heavy on their lips. And it's like, who are you? Who 
why are you here? What's your reason? Like, it totally seemed like they had a shady, ulterior motive. Yeah. It, it was, it was, the vibes off of that character was like, yo, this is going to be the antagonist to Yaguchi. And it subverts your expectation again because he becomes a friend. Yeah. He becomes a nice guy, but I still wonder, like, why were you, like, what was your purpose? <laughs> like, like, they didn't really show his story. No. And it seemed, so, okay, whenever he talked about attractive women, he'll say they're attractive. It's like, oh, hot babe over here. And towards the end of the show... At a phone call, at the end of a phone call, you see him with this group of women. Harem. And I was thinking, no, I bet those are his his sisters. No, uh, the way they showcased his like showcased his character, he that's his sisters. The way that, bruh, they were not holding back when they were sh- throwing shade at him. They told him, "You're such a loser." And they kind of have the same smile as him. That kind of mis- like mischievous smile. It, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. They did. It, I mean, it, it's just... If there's going to be a second season, which I hope it is. Because it's really good. I hope there's a second season. Um, the way the anime showcased him... There's a lot to unpack with that character. I yeah. bet. I bet he has like a story, like a big one. You know, it's interesting too. Um, not to derail from the topic, but the show also doesn't really showcase the time that's passed because when the story starts, Yaguchi's sixteen, and by the end of the ep- the the twelfth episode, he's eighteen. Really? Yeah. Because in the beginning, when he's introduced to the art club, Marumori was in the club, and then she graduated. They show the graduation. And he was the second year. He was the second year. She was the third year. And then uh, he was. He went into prep school, and then it was his time to graduate. I assume that was one year. Well, I mean, you could also say that if he was 16, he was probably 16 going on 17. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That could be one. But, uh, yeah, it it really, it, the anime didn't show, and most anime don't really put emphasis on how much time has passed. I mean, <laughs> really? you think of, like, uh, Higahiro and how much time the two characters were with each other, which was half a year. The anime doesn't showcase that. The manga does, but the anime does not give that much credence to it. Um, one of the other characters, I know we've been jumping around of different characters, but like Yorosuke uh, Takahashi. Now that character is who looks exactly like Marumori, and we think that they're potentially related. But um, he's a he's basically a child prodigy. Yeah, and he's socially awkward. He's rude, arrogant, and every time like he succeeds on something, he's like, "Of course I would. I knew I would." Of course, I knew I would. He's, <laughs> he's such a he's such a jerk to Yaguchi, and like you see, they have such an antagonistic like relationship all throughout the season until like at one point, and I think that was at the end when he's doing the um, and he's when they're uh, doing the the test at the prep school, uh. It, Yorosuke, he tells Yaguchi, he's like, that was pretty good. You know, he gives him, like, praise, and that's the first time he gives him praise, because didn't he say before, like, he's like, you have it so good, because he's, like, got everything else, why are you doing this? And, like, that goes back to what you were saying earlier, about no one really sees how much work Yaguchi puts in the stuff that he does. You know what? There is a journey for Takahashi's view on Yoguchi because when they were in prep school together, Yoguchi was trying to find his style, trying to get better at being an artist. And then he asked Takahashi's opinion, advice. And he was asking Takahashi, okay, what's wrong with my art? Like, what am I missing? And then Takahashi says, like, do you even understand 
the artist that you're trying to imitate? Like, do you understand what this art means? And Yoguchi's like, not really. And Takahashi criticized him for that. He's like, then you don't know. Like, why are you even doing this art? You're so good at all this stuff. Why do art something that I'm good at? Why are you trying to get into it? Oh, yeah, because he was good at replicating, but not understanding, interpreting, or anything like that. And, oh, yeah, we want to talk about Mayu Oba, the teacher. Yeah, she was so mysterious, too. She was giving MILF vibes, yo. Oh, she is a MILF. <laughs> I kept saying, like, yo, when is she going to hook up with G- Gucci? I was, I was annoying you with that. I was like, yo, I think going to hook up. She got, like, three sons. I was like, oh, she, he can give her a fourth. Yes, I was getting annoyed with that. You no, know, let her be a teacher. Don't dirty this, okay? Do not paint this beautiful story here. Every scene she was, like, over here, like, milking it heavy. No, she was just being really observant, which is what all artists are. They're very observant, which is they showcase in the story, especially with Yoguchi's development, because at first he was just taking things at face value, but after becoming an artist, he started being more observant, noticing things, and that's how he started to get to know these characters more, which is what Mayu Oba, the teacher, was doing too. She was observing him. Okay. Seeing his progress, his development. She was watching him so intently. I think she was really intrigued by him. Intrigued or attracted? Or both? Maybe both. <laughs> Especially when he showed her like the, the naked self portrait. She's like, you s- Oh, yeah. She was like, Oh, this is. Oh, this is beautiful. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. She's like, The pecs and the, the-, the, the beauties and flaws. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I don't know who was weirder, Mayu or Haruka. Like, they could have... They were both the mysterious characters that you want to see more of, and you really don't know, like, what's going on with either one of them. Like, you didn't really see any background story for Haruka until, like, the last episode. And then Mayu, I think it was six or seven episodes in when you finally saw that... I think it kicked off one episode. You saw she had like sons. And I think the episode prior, she said, I've got three boys. And you're like, wait, what? You got what? Yeah, that totally made me conclude that she was not having the hots for Yaguchi. She was, she was just being a good teacher. Yeah. Like it, it was just definitely one of those things. And, you know, I, I, I feel like, and I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I really feel like we could do like a whole second podcast about this. Whatever's going to happen next, like, I feel like if they do another season, and the reason we've come to understand, like, the reason uh, they haven't done a second season so far is that the anime is not that far out from where the manga is. And the manga got delayed, or it's on halt because of the mangaka getting COVID. But, um, I could definitely see the second season having a heavier emphasis and focus on Maki Ikuana, Ryuji Ayakawa, and Haruka Hashida. Those three, I think, might take a little bit more of a vehicle role over Yaguchi. Because Yaguchi's growth and whatnot, his development, I'm not saying it's complete, but it's, it's close to being full circle. It totally felt like it went circle because... At the last episode, when he was taking the final exam for the entrance exam for the college that he picked out, he came to a realization of what his style is. What's the meaning of art? How does he interpret things? How does he view things through his eyes, his perspective? And it kind of seemed like it was solidifying him as an artist. Yeah, it definitely did that. Uh, it's, it's, I'm wondering like how much more, you know, how much more, um, they're going to do with Yuguchi, like how much more of a character arc he might get, you know, he might get a whole lot, he might not, but we're not too sure. Um, I I definitely just think it should 
like switch over to the other characters because I there's more meat off of that they could develop with the stories of them than with sticking with just uh, Yaguchi. I mean, we've seen that in other you know um, stuff that we we've, we've seen. Like think of like Horimiya, how like even though the two main characters were like it, it was about them. It still rotated out to all the other characters. They all got their time, their little mini arcs and whatnot before it completely wrapped up. And I think, you know, if we dive further into Ryuji, get like, if they do another season, give Ryuji like four or five episodes diving into how they came to be the person they are now. Uh, we get a whole section for Haruka, you know, something for Maki because things were. Peeves, we got you know, it's like walking through a store and getting those little samples. I mean, mm, that's good. It you know? definitely felt like they were introducing the characters, yeah. It definitely felt like that. And the way this season went, it felt like they left things open ended, yeah, for in case they don't make a second season. But if they do, they can they have all this material, this foundation for that second season, yeah. Um, and I think other characters that they, they I kind of want to touch on it real quick before we, we wrap up, but um, two characters I actually want to touch on real quickly. So, Urashima, that was so funny when, like, the I think was, this is the graduation part where they gave out the graduation pin. You're supposed to give out your second pin on your, your... Your second button of your uniform to your crush. Yeah. And, like, you saw, like, Ryuji... All the girls are surrounding it, and you can tell. Like, so the girls wear the sailor uniform. The guys wear the Ryogaku, I think this was called. Yeah. And um, Ryuji has the t the top part is a Ryogaku, and the bottom part is a sailor skirt. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you see, like, all the girls are surrounding Ryuji because that's like what, and it's so funny because, like, I I know a lot of girls that have like I think even you two have you know have like the the one bi or gay friend that's incredibly attractive. And the girls are just like, you'll just swing this way. <laughs> it's so sad that you, you like men. It's such a tragedy. <laughs> so it's like, Can we have your DNA still? <laughs> Will yeah. you be the father of my children? I just need that DNA. It's a, so uh, my mind went south on that. But anyways, uh, so so you saw that you saw the girls surrounding and then it's panned over to Urashima who had this deadpan look and the friends looked at him and it's like that was left up to interpretation so you don't know if Urashima didn't know Ryuji was a guy or if they had a crush on him or if they were jealous it was completely up to interpretation yeah we don't know like I I it probably seemed like it was like us where we just assumed that Ryuji was a woman and <laughs> and then we didn't know until it was told to us in their face. Totes in their face. <laughs> and um, with Urashima, what was funny was the night before he was so excited about giving his second button to his crush. Yeah. And then that thing happened. So it's like, wait. Was Ryuji his crush, or is his no. crush going after Ryuji? Like we don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll find out in the manga. <laughs> like the the subtlety of how they showcase things is just, it's so good. Really good with the details. It's very subtle details. And uh, the other character that I want to, to quickly touch on was uh, Koiga Kubo. So he's the most boncho delinquent looking character he looks like an adult it looks like an adult looks like he's the most delinquent character of yaguchi's like gumi or group and then you have like a character development moment with him where like he was inspired by yaguchi pursuing art and he's like what do you say he wanted to pursue like he wanted to be uh, a patier patier he wants to make cakes yeah and it's like it was really really touching because it's like you would not think like the the rough looking guy would be like such a gentle soul 
And that was really, that was really well done. I was like, wow. That was such a small part. And it was also important because this is where Yaguchi was learning that people were reading him. Yeah. They were totally reading him. They were saying, you're very observant. You react to others. You are trying to be considerate of others. You're insecure. You don't really open up to people about your insecurity. And in this scene where Koi was opening up to Yaguchi about wanting to... Oh, Kubo. Kubo? Koi and Kubo. You just call him Kubo. <laughs> Kubo. Kubo opened up to Yaguchi that he wanted to bake cakes. And he called out Yaguchi saying, you don't really open up to us. So when you said you wanted to be an artist, that inspired me. And because you inspired me, I'm opening up to you about wanting to be a baker. Yeah. And then that's where Yaguchi's like, you know, I've been told I don't really open up to people about my insecurities, my thoughts. And that's where he started to open up to bear himself yeah and, uh, and circling back to yaguchi real quick uh, one of the things like typically when you see uh anime or you read manga with your your typical protagonists they're usually terrible in one thing but they're really really good in something else and they're kind of tropey i guess you could say yeah they're very tropey and Yaguchi really doesn't fall into a trope because you see, like, oh, he's smart, but then you see how much he he works really hard to maintain his great. Like, he's a good student. Mm -hmm. You know, he's doing really well. He works really hard to, to get into the, the college. Um, and then you also see a side of him that you don't typically see in male protagonist characters was he cries a lot. A lot. He's an emotional protagonist. Very much so. You know, and you see, like, when he, when, you know, going, I know he said at the beginning, like, he was very much, like, mocking the art club and everything like that in the prep school. The reason for that was because he comes from a poor family. Yeah. And they can't really afford to send him to college or to really anything else because they're barely getting by. And so that shaped his view of basically resenting everyone else and he's really the type like he smokes cigarettes or he was smoking and he was drinking and he was doing that because in Ryuji is the one who called him out he does it to fit in and social smoking he's a social smoker I understand that because I used to be a social smoker um, he, he did that to fit in with his group and then as you see as he starts to become more and more himself, his group doesn't really do that anymore. That's right. Yeah. Like, it's really suddenly, I think the last time you see any cigarettes that Yaguchi has or anything like that was that one point with uh, Ryuji, uh, when Ryuji had a really down point when he got uh, dumped by the guy. No, it was after that, too, because when Yaguchi was getting really frustrated with his art development, like, he had a breakthrough, but it wasn't good enough. And he got so frustrated that he started smoking. Oh, yeah, he did. He did. He did, yeah. <laughs> he became a true stress smoker. <laughs> yeah. And it was also cool seeing, like, how his parents were handling the whole development of him pursuing something he was interested in. Because you saw how, like, initially they weren't for it because he was so afraid to, to, for him to get into the prep school. And to be in the art club, he had to get the sign off from his parents. Yeah, because he was and, still a minor. Yeah. And so he didn't get that sign off because he was terrified of showing it to his parents because they already showcased, like, hey, we can't afford this. Don't bother with it. And so you see, like, the initial re resistance to it. But the more that he started showing promise, you start seeing his parents slowly come around. So they became super supportive, especially his mom was so wholesome. Yeah, that was a nice relationship, and it got to the point where I thought the dad was just didn't care. He's yeah. like a neglectful father, but at the end of the of the season, it turns out he actually cared, and he yeah. was excited for his son to get into the college. Yeah. And I was thinking, why did he 
Did he leave the father out? Yeah, they should have showcased that more. It, it also shows the duality of Yaguchi and Ryuji because you see Yaguchi coming from a poor family and he's not really... He has a gift, but a gift that needs to be fostered for art. Right. You know, and he's a hard worker, but things don't come easy to him. And but he does have a supportive family. And on the parallel or the the duality of that, you see Ryuji, who is incredibly gifted. And, and we didn't even touch on it, and that can be another podcast where Ryuji was in the prep school to get into the college and they just painted the X and walked out. There's a lot there. To, there's a lot to impact, but Ryuji has the gift and doesn't dive... Well, Ryuji has a gift, doesn't have supportive parents, but, but does have a supportive grandmother. And the family is well off. The family is well off. And there's a rift. There's a really big rift. It was odd. Yeah. It's like the parents resented the grandmother and took it out on Ryuji. Like, there was a lot going on there, yeah. which is why we're thinking there's more to it and there should be a second season and the manga has more information. Like, yeah. guaranteed. Like, there is a lot going on there. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. And I, I think the next time we do uh, a podcast for Blue Period, I think we'll probably be read up on a couple chapters at mm -hmm. that point. Because um, I'm definitely wanting to know more. This, this show was good. Um, again, Netflix has been doing really well with a lot of the manga, well, the anime that they've been bringing on. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I remember when you pulled it up and also it suggested it several times and we looked at it and like we said earlier like the artwork doesn't give you any indication at all or the trailer the trailer just shows yaguchi in the hallway and then ryuji is running through the halls holding a canvas and you see ryuji going into the art world and how beautiful it looks like that was it that was the trailer so my impression was Ryuji was the female lead that, what well, well, I want to say, influenced Yaguchi and got him into the art world when it was actually more like Ryuji was there to introduce it and Yaguchi took the initiative to yeah. really get into it. Yeah. And I thought Blue Period was the name after the first episode or chapter where he made his first art of the city in blue but it was totally different yeah <laughs> it was related to picasso and a literal time period yeah so i mean well, with that being said like it, it's really good if you do decide to watch it it's captivating all the way through. Wholesome. I, it's very wholesome. We we literally sat and binged it all 12 episodes, and it was really, really good. And I, I highly recommend it if you're looking for something wholesome, but also something to touch on serious topics, but touch on it in a way that's left up to interpretation versus how Western media preaches everything to you. Like, I, I say, watch this. It deals with a lot. Inferiority complex, insecurity, Suicide, uh, abuse, pursuing passions, uh, having a supportive group, the importance of that. It's very well-rounded, and these characters are very three-dimensional. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, I, that's that's all I have to say about this. It's, go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really like this anime because I was... Totally fine with the ending. I was thinking, yep, that's it. And then we looked up that there was an actual manga. And I was like, oh, I'm totally reading this. But with the anime, they left it where it's fine, where it ended. But I really hope there is a second season. That's how much I really like this. And I would definitely recommend this to people. Recommend it to people so they can watch it. And so that will encourage the production to make a second season. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have a motive for this. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing, too. Because there's so many, like, anime that we watch that have mangas that 
they're so good, but they don't get greenlit for a continuation because for whatever reason, like uh, Kotaro lives alone. The manga is still going. And that was a great anime. It was wholesome and dark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as far as I know, it's not getting a second season. It should. It really should. Yeah, it should. That one should have a second season. At least <laughs> let us know how Kotaro goes. Yeah. Does he get like a better happy ending than what we saw? Because it it gave us like a sad and happy ending at the same time for multiple characters. Yeah. yeah and I really feel like if, if, if stuff like Kony can't communicate... I'll say it here, and y'all can flame me for it. I don't care for that show. The first episode was okay. First couple episodes are okay. It got really weird, and it just... If you've got a main character, and you've got a main character that's also in the supporting role, which is the boy, I feel like you should focus on them, and then they vehicle out to other people. Coleman can't communicate. My issue with that was it introduced me in characters off the top and it just kept introducing characters and kept introducing them and he had the one character that got kidnapped and it was just weird and, uh, and that's another podcast anyway uh <laughs> i'm just saying like it, it i like how yaguchi was a vehicle and i think that should be that type of story structure is what goes for it and which i think does really really well i think we also like Yoguchi as a protagonist. Yeah. He was pretty unique because we've seen a lot of protagonists where they go through struggles and such, and we see them go through breakthroughs and go through the struggles again. But with Yoguchi, he goes through the struggles for a while, and when he finally gets acknowledged for his efforts for his achievements he is so appreciative of it while in other animes or manga it's like it's a given it's like you have victory move on yeah. but with him you're just like so happy with him because this guy he cries for a while yeah. like like it's a slow cry it's not like bawling it's like a tear and he's trying to hold it back and then he can't hold it anymore like very wholesome yeah yeah it's very, 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 very good. Real men cry. Yeah, you know, it's it's it was superb, but uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. Yep, me too. <laughs> so if you guys have not seen Blue Period yet, go watch it. If you got Netflix, watch it now. Binge it. It doesn't take that long to binge the whole thing. Like only half your day. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have seen it, let us know your thoughts about it. it. Are there things that you didn't like? Or are there things that you did like but we didn't mention it? Did, did we forget anything? Like, there's a lot going on in this show. Please share it with us. Let us know your thoughts. Even if, you, uh, if you've read the manga, also let us know what you think, too. If you, you know, compare and contrast the manga to the anime. Because we definitely, I mean, anything to get the conversation going, we're... Totally down for. Other than that, thank you all for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lejo Superfina. You can find me on YouTube, Superfina, twitch.tv slash Lejo Superfina, and on social media at Lejo Superfina. Across the board. <laughs> across the board yeah simplicity yes if you're a content creator make sure you have a universal branding it goes a long way you don't want to be astro boy 3649 on one platform and then whatever on something else keep it universal anyways i am michael casanova uh, i also have another podcast that i do casanova podcast I interview various celebrities, content creators, uh, the gaming and tech industry, and so much more. So check that out. You can catch me across the board, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, if you still use that dead platform, and uh, many others, uh, just at Mikhail Casanova across the board. So if you're looking for stuff, there you go. Tech reviews, podcasts, streams, game reviews, and so much more. 
So thank you all for listening to this episode. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Laters.